Hello guys, what are you doing here? I noticed that you two were thinking about something. What is it? Hello Fakrol, we are considering on which application can be used to perform the ODL, especially during this COVID-19. As all teaching and learning process is used through online digital platform. That's right. We don't know which application is the most suitable and easy to use that can meet our requirement as a student. Oh, don't worry about this. Let me see what options do you have. We have two options which is Google Meet and Google Classroom. Oh, that's easy because I have used these applications before. That's great. Lucky for us to have you here. So, can you tell us the comparison of these two applications for Kroll? Sure, no problem. Let me show you a formal presentation about the comparison of these two applications. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Zarif Hakimi bin Muhammad Asri and I'm from class D, I am 2454B and today we would like to talk or share some information about Google Meet and also Google Classroom. In this part, for the first point discussion in this comparison between Google Meet and Google Classroom, Zarif will explain about the team of Google Meet itself. As Zarif know, uh, that this Google Meet is an application about a visual meeting concept. So, in this point, Zarif will explain about Google Meet team itself. So, Google Meet, also known as Google Hangouts Meet, is built to let dozens of people to join the same virtual meeting and speak, share the video with the, each other from anywhere with the internet access. It is mean this application can be explored and usable for education. This will be a great way for students to catch up or learn during this pandemic problem in online learning. Furthermore, Zarif also want to add that the lecturer also can use Google Meet to share whatever is on their screen with everyone on a call and any participant can turn their own audio and video feed at any time. This application or platform will be application that can help the lecturers and students in education. Thank you Zari for your explanation. Hmm, I believe that Google Classroom is more beneficial than your application. Am I right? It's okay. My name is Muhammad Fagrazi bin Muhammad Farid and the next slide is I will explain to you about Google theme for application named as Google Classroom. Firstly, Google Classroom is a free tool assisting educators to manage and assess programs while interactions with learners from school or at home or on the go. For your information, Google Classroom is one of the products of G Suite for Education aside from Google Meet and Google Drive and many more. In addition, instead of making teachers and lecturers monitoring on their students, Google Classroom is assisting the teachers and the lecturers on monitoring their students even on the virtual. For students, Google Classroom can be used to access to their assignments and homeworks while on the same time, the lecturers and the teachers can access and view their assignments and works on Google Classroom. Based on our interaction with Google Classroom, we stand firm that Google Classroom can increase rapidly the students' management in their, learn in their class session and assist them even more for their education in virtual learning. Furthermore, Google Classroom acts as an assistant to both lecturers and students that it can remind you on what to do and when to do. This is very uh, prominent uh, for both of them as it can assist them in this pandemic outbreak. That's all for me for this application theme. And then we will move on to our friends. Bye! Now, I will explain about the Google Meet Accessibility. As for Google Meet, 
the host during the session need to give the links to the users and participants in order for them to use the Google Meet. The links can only be used at the moment which has been set in a limited time by the host. Google Meet's users cannot access the links during other times because the session is live session and not recorded version. So, users need to access the links during the live session to join the online meeting or online classes together with the host. Moreover, participants that receive links from the host must also seek for permission to enter the live session. This ensures that users that are not identifiable by the host cannot enter the Google Meet session. The host must accept the participant's permission to enter the live session as this is one of the security system provided by the Google Meet. Users that cannot enter the session must seek for permission from the host again because sometimes the host did not receive the notifications to allow the users to enter the Google Meet session. For Google Classroom, the accessibility for Google Classroom is users can use the codes given by the host at any time without having limit time to access the files in the Google Classroom. Detailed explanation about the accessibility of Google Classroom will be explained by Nadia. That's all for me. Thank you. In this part, Nadia will explain about the accessibility of Google Classroom. In terms of accessibility of this application, it is more extensive than Google Meet. There are two points that need to be highlighted here. The first one is accessibility in terms of code or link. Once the lecturer has given the code to their student, it allows them to access it at any time and anywhere without the needs for any new code. While for Google Meet, the link provided can only be accessed at the moment. For example, during ODL, most of the lecturer will give the code to their student at the beginning of the semester and it depends to them whether to access it at the time or later. And even in some cases, there are students who access into the Google Classroom at the middle of the semester. It shows that the accessibility of this application is wide and open. The second point is the accessibility in terms of features available. Once students can enter the Google Classroom, they can see the features available such as the task or assignment given by the lecturer, slide, submission date, group members and other features as well. This access is only valid for those who have logged in to the Google Classroom. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nurman Hakim bin Kamaludin. So today I will present about interaction in Google Meet. The first benefit using Google Meet is a host and all the participant can view the number, total number of the participants in the CZ. All participant names are viewed in alphabetical order. Below the participant profile, there are two icons. The first one is a mute icon, and it means that the, the participant turn off the mic. The second icon is three dots icon. That means that if the participant uh, open the mic, the three dots we display on the participant profile and if the participant open their mic the profile will be on top on others participants next the participant can also choose to turn on or off their mic in the season and in addition the future is can be used to check the attendance it make it easy for the the lecturer or the teacher to make sure that all the students are ready in that season. Finally, lecturers and students can choose to turn off or open their mic and webcam or choose to open one of those functions. It is very important not to interrupt the meeting if there are disturbance things and that's unwanted such a noise or visual. That's all for me. Thank you.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Muhammad Safan bin Muhammad Razali So I would like to explain about the Google Classroom application in term of interaction So in the Google Classroom application the teacher and students can only view through offline mode only The offline mode only meaning they cannot see each other face or making a voice in making the interaction <coughs> So this is the function uh, in the Google Classroom. They cannot making a video call like a Google meeting. So next, for the uh, Google Classroom interaction, the teacher and students can also make a posting in the Google Classroom. So teachers or students, they can making a posting uh, for sharing a assessment or want to share their opinion so the interaction will happening when uh, all the user or all the member in the google classroom reply for their posting so all the teacher and classmate they will reply for each other for their posting so we did this method they had made the interaction among the lecturer and and classmate classmate and classmate <coughs> so thank you Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Imran Hakim and I will talk about Distinguished value of Google Meeting which is It can record the meeting and share the Share to the student for further reference uh, Firstly I will talk about Google Meeting can record Recording include the active speaker and anything that Is presented uh, such as slide that present presented by the lecturer next uh, secondly i will uh, talk about the recording uh safe to the conductor of the meeting or class which is the lecturers and the recorded meeting will save to their google drive the under my drive in the folder name as meeting recordings and this recording will be banished after one month next uh, uh, about this record meeting that have in lecture google drive it can be shared to their student by shared link of google drive and lastly uh, google meeting that can record that can record it can help the student to make some revision on their subject as further reference to the student. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Mama Farhan bin Nizam and I would like to continue my friend presentations. I would like to explain about the Google Classroom Distinguished Value. Google Classroom has a few to attach many education materials such as assignments, guidelines and notes. Besides that, the student can also submit their assignments on Google Classroom instead of using other materials. This can lead to efficiency in learning session and assisting the teachers greatly. As, uh, as we can see, this is the available education material attached by a teacher. The students can further, further refer to those material for their learning session in addition, the materials can be downloaded. The student can download and save their, these materials on their laptop. On top of that, a lecturer can monitor their students. A lecturer can view the assignment that have been turned in by the students and those yet uh, not those uh, yet to submit their assignments. This further this video uh, is really convenient for a lecturer to monitor their students during online learning. Google Classroom also provides a video for a lecturer to directly mark student assignments without needing to print out any of them. That's all from me. Thank you. In this part, Mahira, we explain the limitations of Google Meet. Google Meet has a few limitations, especially for free users such as meeting participants have limitations to maximum 
100 people only. This will be difficult, especially for students or club associations to do their webinar, which they have to limit their meeting participants on the Google Meet. As for paid users on the Google for Space Essentials, have limitations to 150 meeting participants, and Google Workspace Enterprise have limitation to 250 meeting participants. Besides, group meeting length for free users maximum to one hour only. This means that you can go a virtual meeting for more than 60 minutes if you are using the free version. This limitation make it difficult especially for students to discuss their longer about their assignments, group projects, and so on between them. Fortunately, Google Meet will let free Google Meet users host calls for unlimited Meet calls up to 24 hours through March 2021 for Gmail accounts. For the limitation of Google Classroom, Tasneem will explain that there are two limitations when using a Google Classroom, such as class size limit and group limit. As a security measure, some activities in Google Classroom have their own limitation depending on the type of account that the user use, such as Google Suit for Education account or personal Google account. The first limitation when using a Google Classroom is the class size limit where there is a lot of class size limit activities and features but I will only mention two limitations for both accounts. For example, when a user uses a Google Suite for Education account, the maximum members including teachers and students that can join class in Google Classroom is only 1000 people. Meanwhile, the user who uses personal Google account, the maximum members can join a class in Google Classroom is only 250 people. Besides, another class size limit when users use these two accounts is the maximum teacher for the class is 20 people, where the user can invite more than 20 teachers, but only 20 teachers can join the class. The second, limit, the second limitation when using a Google Classroom is group limit, where if the user invites a group to join a class, as co-teachers, the group must have 10 or fewer members first before the group can join the class. Next, another group limitation is each person can only be in a certain number of group because user can only join certain group if someone provide a specific code for them to join. Okay, now I know what is the specificity of these two apps. Yes, it indeed a good choice in performing the ODL. Now we can rest assured. Yes, we have already seen the benefit and the advantage of the of these two applications. It surely can help and assist both teachers and lecturers in virtual learning, especially in this COVID nineteen pandemic. I am sure that this application will improve our learning session even in virtual learning. Thank you, my friends. Goodbye. Goodbye, Fakrul. Thank you for your explanation.